Welcome to Electron Online. In this series, we're going to talk about the origin of the solar system. Well, the solar system consists of the sun, and it turns out the sun is what we call a population one star, which means that more than 1% of the sun's mass consists of heavy elements. That is somewhat unusual because most stars, what we call population two stars, were only a very small fraction, typically less than a tenth of a percent or somewhere in that neighborhood, is heavy elements. So our sun is kind of an unusual star as far as that is concerned. Secondly, when we look at the planets in the solar system, the first four are made out of rock and metal, the terrestrial planets. We have the asteroid belt, which is mostly made out of rock and some metal. And then we have the gas planet, but even the gas planets are, are thought to have a very large rocky core. When we look at Jupiter, the core that's made out of rock on Jupiter, it may be as much as 10 or more times the size of the Earth. The rest of the gas planets, of course, are made out of gas. And then we have the copper belt, where we have the trans-Neptunian objects and a series of comets made out of rock and ice. And then we have, of course, the what we call the Oort cloud way out there, which is also pretty well made out of rock and ice. So the, com the composition of the solar system by mass is roughly 71% hydrogen, 27% helium, and 2% other elements, the heavy type elements. So anytime it's beyond hydrogen and helium, we consider them heavy elements. Notice that the consistency of hydrogen and helium is roughly the consistency of what's in the universe. Maybe a little bit more helium than hydrogen because, of course, the sun is busy converting hydrogen into helium, so the ratio will slowly change over time. So the origin of the universe, whatever model we come up with, has to fit what the, what, or I should say the solar system, Whatever the, the model of the, of the origin of the solar system must fit what we end up with today. So whatever model we come up with must be able to explain all the various things that we find in our solar system, which may be different from solar system what we find in other places. So can we come up with a good theory, a good concept of how our solar system came about? And that's what this chapter is all about, is to try and explore how the solar system came about and explain why the solar system looks the way it does today. So that's this chapter, and if you're interested, stay tuned. We'll have some more videos for you on this topic.